Some good, some bad. No uglies, that's good. I think almost everybody got this one right. I'm sure everyone got this one right. I know half of you got this one right and half of you got this one wrong. Because I just watched on your papers, walked around. Um, here's the deal. You really do need to understand what we were just talking about. Please listen carefully because some of you do not have this down. So if you're, if you're just thinking, I got this, this is boring. No, you don't, so pay attention. Um, if you put positive 49, you just blank this problem. If you put positive 49, you just blanked this problem and you got it wrong. You got negative now. <laughs> yeah. If you got negative 49, you understand the concept. Here's the concept. The concept is, if you do not have parentheses around that negative 7, that negative is not being applied to that exponent. Okay, it's not. What's happening is you are taking 7 and squaring it. How much is 7 squared? And then you're making it negative. It's very... It's exactly the same as what we just talked about. That's right. So, that's what we're doing. It's really like this. If I can kind of relate it to this for you. Uh, do you remember the absolute value stuff we just did? When you do this, you go, oh, can you tell me what's the absolute value of negative 8? Positive. Great. Now, can you tell me the absolute value of 8? Negative 8. Can you tell me the negative absolute value of 8? Negative Why is it negative 8? Because the negative is outside of it. Okay. It's not, right? You go, oh, this, and then make it negative. This idea, look at the board right now. This idea is this idea. Same basic idea. This is not inside of any absolute value or any brackets or anything. Neither is that. That's not being applied to this. If you want this to apply to this, it has to be like this. It's got to have parentheses. Are you starting to see the idea now? You have to have that down. Otherwise, you're going to miss every problem that we have like that. That's not acceptable. I can't let you do that. That'd be bad. Thing. So on this example, it's not negative 7 times negative 7, folks. This is negative 7 times 7. That's what that example means. This one will give you negative 49. If you got negative 49, great. You have, you have it down. If you didn't, this is where you're making a mistake. You need to learn how you're learning, right? It's called metacognition. It's thinking about how you're thinking. If you're, if you're learning about how you're learning, you can fix your mistakes. If you're not, if you're just getting problems wrong and skipping them, we go, oh, I guess I missed that one. You're never going to learn it. You're never going to learn it. Um, so you have to really think about these when you're doing them. So when it's like the top example, there's no parentheses. You're only counting one negative sign. That's right. And so it goes back. That's right. This is, rules. I really wasn't lying over here when I did this. This really is exactly the same as doing this. 
really the same thing as that right there. You can break off that negative 1. It's really like having negative 1 times 7 squared. What do you do first? Do you multiply first or do you do exponents first? Exponents. Clearly exponents. So we'd go, oh, this is negative 1 times 49, hence we get negative 49. That's the idea. If it's not in parentheses, that's what we're doing mathematically. If it is in parentheses, we have a different story like this one. We go, oh, this really is, look at that, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. That's what that one means. So we do negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. You should be getting negative 8 on your paper all day long. Do you have negative 8? Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, most people had negative 8 on that one. That's great. Okay, next one. Next one. Are we more like this one or more like this one? The first one or the second one? Second. Definitely the second one. So the question is, is it going to be, is this negative, listen carefully to my voice here, is it negative 3 times 3 times 3 times 3? Or negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3? Which one? Negative 3. Negative 3. Like this? No. All negative. Like that? Yeah. Okay, that looks horrible. <laughs> Yeah, that's the one. The parentheses says that that negative is going with the 3 every single time. Are we going to get a positive or a negative here? Positive. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81. The way you can do that, do 9 times 9. 9 times 9 is 81. That's fine. Um, one thing, one more question that I have before we go into division. Look at the board with me, please. If I did this, would the answer still be positive 81? No. no. What would that answer be then? Negative 81. Very good. I'm going to change it back to what it was. How many people are starting to get the grasp of these exponent things? I'm glad we went over that because that's, that's kind of an important thing. If you hadn't seen that before, this is new for you, you might want to work on that a little bit. Um, so that's, that's something to, to know. The last thing we get to do in this section, we've done addition and subtraction. Those are basically the same thing once you change the signs. We've done multiplication. Division is going to be very similar to multiplication. In fact, we have exactly the same rules. So the rules we just learned for multiplication, we'll apply those to division, and then we'll just have to divide numbers like we normally would any other time. Just have to know the signs. So let's talk about that for about five minutes, and that'll wrap up our section. Before we go any further, do you have any more questions on these exponents? If you do, now's the time. If you're like, ah, I really don't get it. If you do, awesome. But if you don't, are there any questions? Okay. All right, so let's talk about some division. The rules are going to be very similar to multiplication. The rules for division are if you have the, if you're dividing the same signs, you get a positive. Just like if you're multiplying the same signs, you get a positive. If you're dividing different signs, you get a negative. Just like if you're multiplying different signs, you get a negative. So very, very similar. Here's how we're going to see most of our problems with division. They'll look like fractions. They just mean division. This fraction means division. And our rules will be about the same, which means if we are dividing a positive by a positive. What's a positive by a positive? Positive. Positive divided by positive. Yeah, that's like uh, 24 divided by 6. You go, oh, that's 4. Positive divided by positive gives a positive. Also, just like multiplication, a negative divided by a negative that's going to give us, what's a negative divided by a negative? Positive. It's also a positive. Very good. So, for us, the same signs means positive. Same signs means positive. We have two more cases, of course. We can divide a positive by a negative. or a negative by a positive. 
In either case, if we divide a positive by a negative or a negative by a positive, what is our quotient going to be? Negative. Definitely. Just like multiplication works. So same signs mean we're going to get a positive quotient. Different signs mean we're going to get a negative quotient. So in our case, negative 20 divided by positive 5, should we be getting a positive or a negative here? Negative. negative. Notice how we're asking the same question that we did for multiplication. What's the sign first? We don't even have to do the math until we figure the sign out. So definitely we'll have a, you said it, negative how much? 4. Four. Good, then we just do the division. Very similar to multiplication. If you have the multiplication rules down, division are about the same. How about... Um, Negative 80 divided by negative 4. Negative 80 divided by negative 4. Think about the math first, but or while, while I'm asking this, are we going to get a positive or a negative here? Positive. Uh, certainly. And how much? 20. Good. Positive 20. Do the, do the long division if you have to. That's fine. By the way, One of these is okay, one of these is not. I had a lot of people on their homework from the very first time we did division with whole numbers give me the same answer for both these questions. Now that, that can't be right. If you the same answer for both these questions, we're missing something here. One of these is right, one of these is wrong. Which one is okay? Zero over. This one's fine. This one get anything, zero divided by anything, that gives you zero. That's fine, write zero. But if you have a number divided by zero, yeah, it's not zero. You can't write zero, it's not zero. It's nothing. We'd say undefined. So we put undefined. Actually, you know what, it'd be good for us to come back on Wednesday and try some of these ones. So what we're going to do, I'm going to hold off on the rest of this. We'll do about five or six examples on Wednesday. We'll talk about evaluation, and that'll end our section.